everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Haley with Haley stitches and today I'm gonna show you my secret to getting the perfect flying geese every time now I don't know if you have seen these before but they are called foundation paper piecing pads and they look like this and let me tell you they are a must-have if you are having trouble getting the perfect flying geese now I know it can be a little scary to do foundation paper piecing if you've never tried but this is worth it Plus, it'll help you learn a new skill if you've never tried foundation paper piecing before. So if you wanna learn how to make the perfect flying geese, stick around and I will show you how. The supplies that we'll need today is two contrasting fabrics for the floral fabric, which will be my geese fabric. That is cut to four and a quarter inches by five inches. And then my background fabric, which is a white fabric, is cut into two three inch squares that are cut on the diagonal. You'll also need a way to attach your fabric to your paper. I prefer to use a glue stick, but you can also use pins. In addition to these supplies, you'll need the quilt block foundation paper and an iron. Our first step will be to cover the number one on our foundation paper with this fabric. So you don't want to place the fabric on this side of the paper because we need to be able to see the numbers and the outlines. So we're going to flip this piece of paper over and then center this fabric on here. So to attach it, what I'm gonna do is put a little dab of glue in the center. And then we're gonna place the fabric here. And we wanna make sure that the fabric covers all the way to the dotted lines of the paper. If you need help with this, you can use a light box or hold it up to a window. I'm in a bright enough room where I can actually see through the paper, so there's no issue there. And now we've completed step one of the foundation paper piecing. Next, we will flip it over and we're going to want to fold on this solid line between step one and step two. So we're going to fold on this line and then also down here because we're going to be making two flying geese at a time. So now you can see it's folded on both of those lines between step one and step two. Next we want to trim the fabric a quarter of an inch away from the folds. So what this will look like is you will fold it over and then place your ruler down. And I'm using the quarter line here and then I'm just going to trim that off and then I will flip it over and do the exact same thing over here and trim it at a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to step off of camera and do that right now. This is what your foundation paper will look like after you trim the edges off and if you flip it over to the back it looks like this. Now we want to place our background fabric on the number two. So we are going to stitch on this line between number one and two. So first we want to line up our fabric with that line. So we're just gonna take our background triangle and then line it up with our placement one fabric. And I'm just gonna center it there so the same amount of tail is over here as over here. And then we're going to flip it over and take it to our machine. So you definitely can pin this here if you need to, but I am just gonna hold it with my hands. Now that we're here at our sewing machine, we're just gonna line up our needle with the line between one and two. And you wanna start stitching about a quarter of an inch off of the edge of the square. And then just stitch directly on that line all the way down. And before you stitch, make sure that your stitch length is shorter than you usually do. You should have your stitch length be around one and a half because it makes it a lot easier to tear off the paper once we're done stitching. Now that this side is attached, we're going to do the exact same thing for the other side. We lined up our fabric and then we're going to turn it over and then stitch in between the line for one and two. When you're ending your line, just be sure to end about a quarter of an inch off of the line. So you want to start a quarter of the inch off the line and then end a quarter of an inch off the line. And this will just help make sure that your fabric doesn't come undone when you pull off the paper at the end. 
So this is what we have after we've attached our first round of the sky fabrics or the background fabrics. And before we get started on the next step, we just need to give this a nice press. What we're gonna do is press the background fabrics away from the center. Okay, our fabric is pressed open and now we're just gonna repeat those exact same steps to finish up this block. So we're gonna turn it over and I like to just kind of ignore all these excess threads. You can trim them if it bothers you, but they will all get trimmed at the end. So the first step again is to fold on this line. So we already folded between step one and two, so now we wanna fold between one and three. So we will do that on both sides. We're gonna fold. And fold. And sometimes if you stitch a little bit too far like I did here, you just have to rip a couple stitches out so that you can get down to fold on that line. So we're gonna fold here. And now that these are folded, we need to take our ruler and trim a quarter of an inch on each side. So once again, I'm gonna step off camera to do that. This is what the back looks like after it is all trimmed up. There's a quarter of an inch over here, a quarter of an inch over there. And then if you flip it over, you have something that looks like this. And then we are just gonna flip this back over. Now we know it is time to attach the rest of our background fabric. So to do that, we're gonna flip this over and line it up here. Again, I'm just centering the triangle so that the same amount is over here as it is over here. Definitely does not have to be exact. That's why we have the paper piecing because after we trim everything up, as long as we're stitching on the line, so as long as we're stitching directly on this line here, everything is gonna turn out exact. So it's okay if it's not perfect over here. So now I'm gonna stitch this one on and I'm gonna stitch the other side on as well. This is what everything looks like at this step of the foundation paper piecing. Now we are just going to press these triangles open. This is what everything looks like after it's all pressed and the next step is to trim. To trim, we're gonna take a look at our diagram here and you want to trim on all of the solid black lines. So that's gonna be around the outside of your flying geese and the outside here. You do not wanna trim on the inside triangles and you don't wanna trim on the dotted lines around here. So it's really important to trim on the right spot once you've gotten to this point because we don't wanna ruin it after we put in all this work. So let's go ahead and get this trimmed up. So you can use whatever size ruler you want to trim things up. I'm gonna be using a four and a half inch ruler because it works well with this size foundation paper. And what I'm gonna do is just go around and trim on all the solid lines. And now I've trimmed all the way around the outside, so I just need to trim these two lines in the middle. And this is what we end up with. So we have two of our flying geese, and we'll do the big reveal. And there they are. So they look perfect, exactly how you want your flying geese to look. And then now that everything is all put together and trimmed up, we can actually remove the foundation paper from the back. So to do this, all you want to do is just tear off the paper and you can do this however works best for you. I usually like to fold along the dotted line and then just pull it off. Of course, if you used a longer stitch length, this part might be challenging. So just remember to always use a shorter stitch length than you normally would in order to put these together because it makes tearing off the paper really, really easy. So you can see how perfect these end up looking. They are really perfect flying geese. It is the only way that I am able to make flying geese this perfect. And it does take a little bit longer than the traditional method, but it is well worth it in my opinion. 
Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you found it helpful or you learned something new, please give it a like. I would appreciate it so much. And I do want to mention one more thing is that these foundation paper pads come in multiple different sizes. I also have a three by six that gives me a nice large flying geese. So be sure to check out all the different sizes in the description below. I'll see you all next time. Bye.